how do I have judgments removed from my credit report? This is another frequently asked question that we're going to answer by bringing in my go-to guy for credit repair, Jonas Mitchell of Scribble. But before we do, help me out, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and make sure to click the bell to get notified. Also, like my page on Facebook, and if you don't mind, follow me on Instagram. And we're going to get to Jonas and answer this question starting right now. Hey Jonas, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to help answer some frequently asked credit repair questions. And when I have someone come to me, they'll purchase a home, you know, we'll go through the loan application process to get them there. And we check the credit and we notice that there are judgments on the credit report. Oftentimes, they're not even aware that these judgments are there. So what are some steps that a person could take to remove judgments from their credit report? Sure, and fantastic question. Um, listen, judgments are, are certainly uh, something that we don't want to see on our credit report, and it definitely affects you in a great way. Um, and there definitely is a process to get those removed. And uh, so let me go ahead and break that down for you now. In reality, all public information um, is essentially handled the exact same way. So uh, let's go ahead and break down those steps. Now, it used to be where um, what you would do is you would simply go into the credit bureaus and create your dispute. And then the, you would basically ask them to verify their information as with the original creditor, which in this case is a court system. And so they will go back and then come back with the information and say that it was verified. Well, then that person uh, doing the dispute would then go to the court system. They would get a letter uh, that states that the court system does not report any information to the credit bureaus. They would take that information, go over to the uh, back to the credit bureau and say, hey, uh, you said that you verified this information from the original creditor, which is the court system. The courts just said that uh, this information was not provided to them, so therefore you have to delete that information. Well, in reality, that information comes from LexisNexis, L-E-X-I-S-N-E-X-I-S, LexisNexis. And they're a third party uh, private company that scrubs all of the court data and then they furnish that information over to the credit bureaus for a fee. So what the credit bureaus did, well, they got hip to that idea and they said, okay, well, since everyone keeps saying that they're going, you know, the court's not providing it, let's just tell the truth. The information is coming from LexisNexis and LexisNexis gets it from the courthouse. We all know that. So that's where the information is coming from. So that sort of kills that, uh, that process. Now you can still try that process if you go through the others, because one thing we always tell people is, there's no such thing as a 100% guaranteed way to get any information removed. Even if it's actually inaccurate, like for sure, it's not the correct information, there's still a possibility that it can come back as verified because whenever we're going through this dispute process, it's all computers that are generally handling all of this information, okay? So you can still try that if all else fails and there are some times where that will work, but generally what we always tell people is, if it works that way, it's not because that process worked per se, it's more so that that information was most likely gonna come off of your credit report anyway. So regardless of what you did, simply by disputing the information, it would have come off. But we're going through the ways that we can essentially uh, really, really increase the level of opportunity to get rid of that information, right? Okay. So here's the correct way that you wanna do it. So again, I just shared with you that LexisNexis is a third party company and they go through and they scrape that information. Well, they're actually getting that information from another computer uh, system called PACER. And PACER stands for Public Access to Court Electronic Records, okay? So this is where the court systems actually upload the information. And so that information cannot be scrubbed. You can't challenge it. It is what it is and that's final. So PACER is the end all be all. So what you can do is you can go to pacer.gov and you can actually uh, look up the actual court record and find the information. Now, the one thing that you have to remember is the credit bureaus, whenever you get your credit report, there's only but so much information that they can report on that, on that report, right? There's actually a plethora of information that you won't see that actually is housed inside LexisNexis. LexisNexis will pull all of the information. 
Now, most people only know about TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax right. as far as being the big three credit bureaus, and most people think that that's all that there is. There's actually over 20 of them. Oh, wow. So LexisNexis is a credit bureau, and they're held to the same standard as the FCRA, or same standard as the other credit bureaus when it comes to the FCRA. So all the information that they report has to be accurate. And if you find information that isn't accurate on your LexisNexis credit report, you can challenge that information and dispute it the same way that you dispute with the first, uh, the first three. And if they come back and say, oh, that this information is verified, and then you can show proof that the information is actually inaccurate, then they have to delete that information. Then you go back to the original big three and you say, hey, how could you have verified this information when the person who said that they could verify that information couldn't even verify it? See what I did there? Right. So, so, so for those of you who are watching, FCRA stands for what? Uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act. Fair Credit it's Reporting the, Act. Gotcha. Yeah, it's the law that governs all of credit repair, uh, credit reporting. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so let me just finish this up real quick. So, okay, so where was I? We went through um, and we, we pulled the information from Pacer. So let's talk about Pacer for a very quick second. When you get into Pacer, you're gonna to have to go in and register for an actual account and you wanna register for a view only account. So once you get inside Pacer, registering is free, but it does cost you 10 cents per page view. So every time you do a search based on the information that's under your like actual record, mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to cost you 10 cents. So you want to go through and click. There's like maybe 10, 12 links that you're going to see. So it might cost you a dollar or two at most uh, to go through and, and click all of the links and then download all of the information to your uh, computer so that you can then share that information with LexisNexis once you pull your LexisNexis report. So you pull the LexisNexis report, log into Pacer, download all of the, the information from Pacer, go side by side and make sure that all the information is correct. If it's not correct, all you want to do is simply challenge the information with LexisNexis and say, uh, and this is the important part, okay? So now you're going to draft the letter, and this is going to be for any letter that you send, whether it's LexisNexis or TransUnion Experian or Equifax. In the original letter, all you're going to say is, I, um, I recently pulled my uh, credit report, and uh, it seems that I found some inaccurate information. Can you please verify with the original creditor that all of the information is accurate, okay? So that's your, your opening to the letter. And then you wanna put reason, so you wanna state your reason. Uh, the reason why I'm challenging this information is I have reason to believe, after looking at my credit report, that there is inaccurate information. Please verify with the original creditor. And then in your instructions, because you have to have a reason and an instruction for the credit bureaus, your instruction is, um, uh, uh, please verify this information with the original creditor. If the information cannot be verified, please delete or immediately delete this information. And please provide proof uh, with my signature or please provide proof showing um, that my signature shows that I owe this information or that I owe this debt. Okay. Now you don't need that last tag for LexisNexis because they're not a debt collector or uh, they're not reporting a debt, they're actually reporting public information. So everything else is good. Just leave off that last tag. But for all of the other bureaus, that's what your, your uh, instruction is going to be. And then in that last paragraph, all you're going to say is, uh, if this information is verified um, or deleted, so if the information is verified or deleted, please send me a full copy of my credit report. You have to put that last part in there. or the, Otherwise, they're only going to send you bits and pieces of it, and you need the whole thing. Okay. okay, because that's going to be the most po uh, most valuable information that you can have. So get a full copy of your credit report. That's key. Yep. Okay. Do I need to do a recap? I can recap like a short snippet. Shoot. Okay. Yeah, let's do a quick recap. Okay. So first thing you're going to do is create that dispute letter, send it off to each of the bureaus, um, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. All you're going to do is say, um, I do not... Uh, Verify this information with the original creditor, exactly what I just told you. And then make sure that you put the actual information that you're challenging. So if it's a court record, uh, which in this case it would be, you're just going to put the court case number and all that information. So make sure that all that's in there. And then from there, we're going to go over to, uh, once we come back with the verified, so give it um, 30 to 45 days. Once it comes back as verified, which it should, 
Then we're going to go back to LexisNexis. We're going to pull the information from LexisNexis and uh, ask them the exact same thing that we did for the original creditors, uh, credit bureaus. And once they send it verified, we're then going to pull the information from Pacer. We're going to compare the two, find the inaccuracies. And be, again, because these are computer systems that are pulling, there are almost always inaccuracies. Okay, I would never say always because you always get in trouble when you say always, mm -hmm. but there's a very, very high chance that there's going to be inaccurate information on your credit report. So all you're going to do is find out what that inaccurate information is and then challenge that information with LexisNexis because they originally verified the information, right? right. So now that you've verified it, I'm going to just circle all the information that's inaccurate and say, hey, how is this possible? So now that I send that, I did leave out one tag. I'm glad we're doing this recap. Uh, you're going to put it at the bottom after the whole um, send me a copy and all that good stuff. You want to make sure that you let them know that um, based on the inaccuracies that I found, there are clearly violations being done uh, against me by this information being reported. So if you do not delete this information, I'm going to have, I'm going to be forced to hire a consumer attorney, or you can say an FCRA attorney, either one works, uh, in order to handle, handle this matter. So they will see that, oh, yeah, there is a mistake there and we didn't fix it the first time. So every time that there's a violation for every single um, inaccuracy that you found, it's actually worth $1,000. So they're not going to want to go through that lawsuit. So that's how the information disappears. So then you take that information back from LexisNexis. Once you have the deletion, send that circled with Lexis uh, from LexisNexis. Send that same information over to the credit bureaus and say, hey, how could you have verified this information when the uh, when you say the original creditor verified it and they just told me that um, it was deleted. So clearly this information is inaccurate. So now they're forced to delete it. Otherwise you do the exact same thing. You get the credit attorney, you sue them and the exact same thing works. That's how we get the deletions. So that's awesome. So just, you know, this process, what can someone expect time-wise for this to take? Yeah. So whenever we're going through this process, again, when you send it to the original uh, three, the big three, that's going to take you, you know, from 45 days. Sending it to LexisNexis is another um, uh, 30 to 45 days. And then going back to the credit bureaus, another 30 to 45 days. So we're looking at what? Anywhere from three to six months? Three to six months. But yeah. the key here is it is possible. Hey, guys, if you have any more questions, I have links in the description below, as well as a way to contact Jonas. Jonas, thank you so much for taking time to share this information. My pleasure.